And welcome to another Cardinal's Nest here on HBC TV 25. This is the sports show on HBC devoted exclusively to St. Mary's University and its athletic programs. I'm Dean Beckman, joined by our co-host, Donnie Netto. Donnie is the Sports Information Director at St. Mary's. Donnie, thanks for being on the program here again. And uh, we have a lot to get to, a lot of the sporting events uh, that have been going on the past couple of weeks at St. Mary's. And also, our guest during the interview segment will be volleyball coach Mike Lester. Mike's been at St. Mary's for a long time, and another successful season is expected from the volleyball team. Absolutely. We won't put any pressure on him about that <laughs> right. successful season. But, uh, yeah, Mike's, Mike's been around for, uh, for a long time and is, is a regular on the, on the Cardinals Nest. And, and uh, I know he's got a lot of good things to talk about, and they just finished up the Sugarloaf Classic, so that'll be fun to talk about uh, another successful weekend for them, and, and uh, hopefully he can give some insight into what to expect this year for Cardinal Volleyball. All right. We'll put no more pressure than he probably puts on himself, right? Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> but we'll begin this uh, segment of the Cardinals Nest talking soccer, men's soccer, and what a start they've gotten off to. They are 2-1 and one on the season, and they have scored 13 goals in those three games so the offense is rolling early you know it's really funny because uh i mentioned that same exact stat to coach watkins and uh and his comment was yeah but we've only given up two <laughs> and, and he really prides himself on the defense they've, they've been playing uh they opened up the season last week uh last weekend with uh, a win over viterbo 5-0 and then uh, they, they they added to that with a with a 7-0 win in their in their second game and then suffered a, a really tough 2-1 loss to a very, very good North Park team um, on Sunday. And, and uh, Coach Watkins and I talked a lot about that game. And, you know, he's disappointed with, with the loss. But I think the thing that he really took out of that that was a positive was that was the first time they faced any adversity, first time they had to play from behind. And they didn't let the goal that they gave up to North Park for a 1-0 lead get to them. Joe Bosco had a huge goal to tie it up. And, uh, and unfortunately, they gave up a, a, a direct kick goal uh, late in the second half. But uh, a, a very well-played game. And, and I think that that's the game that really kind of tells you that this is going to be a team that, that has a lot of talent and, uh, and really could uh, make, a, make a serious run this year. Yeah, no question about it. And uh, it seems like they're getting contributions from multiple people. I mean, sometimes box scores are littered with one or two people, but not the case this year with this men's soccer team. Um, the goals are widely dispersed and the assists are as well, so contributions from multiple people. Absolutely, and you talk about 13 goals and uh, 11 different players have scored. Jared Wolt and Kareem Rassis are the only ones with two goals, and so everybody else has, uh, has all had one, and that's important. And, and I know one of the things that Coach Watkins is, is really excited about this year is the depth of his team. It's not just, there aren't 11 people he needs to rely on. A game like Sunday against North Park is a great example of the 90 degree heat and the, and the humidity in the 70s, and, and he's able to shuffle in you know, 13, 14 reserves to, to spell the starters. And when you can do that, when you have that kind of depth and really not lose a lot in the in the way that you play that's a that's a huge advantage i think that uh you know as they continue to progress and as as uh, some of the freshmen and younger players who maybe didn't play so much early on now we're going to see some more playing time i think that uh you know they're gonna they're gonna really right. only get better yeah talk about nate levy and goal a little bit because he's somebody they're counting on of course that's always the highest profile position uh, on a soccer team so nate's off to a great center. absolutely and then and the neat thing with nate is is just like i was saying with everybody else that there's a battle uh for the goalkeeping spot i know evan claffey's played very well and 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 uh this freshman centeno is doing an is doing a nice job and so you know there's there's always room for competition and i know that coach watkins likes that because nobody can get complacent. If you get complacent or you struggle a little bit, he's got somebody that can come in and, and do the job. Nate had a very good game uh, against, against North Park, played very well, and, and uh, I know Evan had a shutout uh, you know, in his first start, so uh, there's, a, there's some healthy competition there. I know they all get along. They're, they're good friends. They're good teammates, and, and uh, you know, they all want to play, but uh, I think the bottom line is, is the more they can keep winning, you know, that keeps everybody happy. Right. And, and right now, 2 and one that's a, a very good start for them. Yep. From a coach's standpoint, options are good. Absolutely. Uh, one, they had one more non-conference game on Wednesday. Next Wednesday, though, conference play begins with Augsburg. Absolutely. Kick off the season against Augsburg. And again, the nice thing that, he's, that, that Coach Watkins has right now is that'll be the fifth straight game that they've played at home. 
And uh, I know the Cardinals love to play at the Oak. And uh, right now they're, they're playing very well there. It's, it's you know, when you play, play on turf, practice on turf, it's, it's, you know, there's a, it's a completely different game. So when they do go on the road, uh, if they play on a grass field, it's a little bit different, a little bit of an adjustment. But right now they'll have five straight games uh, at their home field, and, and that's always an advantage, right. especially for us. Donnie, women's soccer got underway this past weekend and getting their first uh, victory of the year. Uh, so they're off to a good start. Contributions from both newcomers and returners there as well. Some familiar names, but then some freshmen stepping in and scoring as well. Yeah, absolutely. The Cardinals rebounded from that 2-0 loss to River Falls to open the season with a 4-0 win over Superior. And, and uh, as you mentioned, familiar name, Emma Schaefer, especially when it comes to playing Superior. She had two goals against them this year to go with her three goals against them last year. So in the last two years, Emma said five goals against Superior. She likes playing the Yellow Jackets. <laughs> and then you had uh, goals from Becca Dupe and Janice Martinez, two, two newcomers to the team. So yeah, the old and the new. And I think that you're gonna see a lot of that this year with the Cardinals in that there are gonna be some freshmen and, and maybe some sophomores who didn't play a lot last year that are gonna be asked to play a, a critical role. And, and uh, you know, Coach Cassidy is, is excited about that. I think that the win that they got against uh, Superior is huge. It kind of gets some momentum rolling. A big game against Luther they had on, on Wednesday night, and then they've got another non-conference game against Carroll, and then they kick off the conference season on Tuesday against mm -hmm. Augsburg. Right, and four of their first five here are at home, so a, a good way to start the season, try to build that momentum. And even that 2-0 uh, loss to River Falls, I talked to Coach Cassidy, and he said both goals were sort of freak goals. He said we really didn't deserve to lose that game. Right, and, and that's, you know, it's... It, as in any sport, those things happen. But, uh, you know, I think you, you can at least take away something from a loss like that, knowing that there were two instances where something funky happened and they scored. Otherwise, the game's a 0-0 zero -zero game. So mm -hmm. I think that he is able to find, you know, definitely a bright spot or two in that, in that game. I don't think he's going to continually try and find that, you know, that silver lining because he's going to want wins. But, um, you know, there are times when you play well and just don't get the result that you want. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that's really what happened against River Falls. Right. Donnie, the cross-country teams are off and running this year, and early results certainly seem promising. Yeah, Coach Burns is very happy. Uh, they had their first, uh, their first meet this last weekend, the St. Mary's Alumni Open, always a nice uh, opportunity for for St. Mary's to kick off the season at home. And, and uh, one of the toughest courses they'll run in is our home course. The hills are, are very challenging. And, and I think that, uh, you know, Ward was happy with the performances. A lot of new faces, especially on the women's side, uh, where, where Ward graduated quite a few individuals. But, you know, some, some solid performances. Uh, Austin O'Hare had a great time to lead the, uh, to lead the men. And, and Allie Thiel did a nice job to lead the women. And, you know, I think people are gonna continually, that's a sport that I really think that people are gonna continually improve. I know last year, if you look at last year when the season started, we weren't talking a whole lot about Jovan Newsom and what he could do. And by the end of the year, here he is a, a national qualifier. So I think it's one of those things that you start, you, you set the bar, and then you, uh, you continue to, to, to work to improve on that. And uh, they head to uh, South Bend, Indiana, to Notre Dame for the Catholic Invitational in two weeks. Yeah. So they'll have some training now for two weeks, get to take a little trip uh, to South Bend and, and uh, compete against uh, a much, much larger field than sure. what they had yeah. uh, last weekend. I, I thought it was really nice for Jace Pater, who's been sort of biding his time a little bit. And, and as the people have graduated, he's a senior now. And I noticed he finished second to O'Hare to lead St. Mary's men. And absolutely. And it's funny that you say that because in, in my job, it's amazing how all you know, Jace is a senior, right? And, and, and it's just, you know, these, these, these men and women are with you for four years and, and you see them grow from, you know, these quiet, timid, shy freshmen to, yep. you know, the, the people that they are. And, and it, that happens not only in their personal life, but also in their, in their, you know, collegiate athletic careers. And Jace is a perfect example. You're right. He bided his time for, for, uh, you know, the first three years. And now he's going to make sure that this senior year is going to be the best yet. And, if uh, if Saturday's performance is any indication, he's right on pace for that. Yeah. And Don, uh, Donnie, finally, uh, men's and women's golf is underway. Greg Moore, the new head coach, we talked about that last week on the show. And uh, both the women and men shooting really well, some of their best scores ever. Oh, my goodness. The, the, the men's team, uh, Coach Moore has just got to be ecstatic right now with, uh, you know, the men shot a 297 in the, in the second day of the Augsburg Invitational last weekend, school record performance. And um, they got a 69 from Kyle Brote. Uh, again, a school record is 300 par. That's something that's 
you know, we haven't we haven't talked about somebody right. shooting a 69 in my 20 years here. So uh, that was outstanding. Um, uh, Brett Jackson went 74, 75 in that in that tournament. So uh, he's playing very well. It's interesting that in that tournament, in that second day of that tournament, uh, Blake Westerberg, who we talk about every week because he's just been phenomenal for the Cardinals all four years. He was their fourth scorer at a 79. So you know, as Greg and, and I have always talked, if he can have four scores in the 70s or a 69 right. and three quarters scores in the 70s, that's going to be outstanding for uh, for them. And and uh, I think that. I'm really excited to see what they can continue to do in in the future in, in terms of this season, and, and hopefully they'll just continue to get better. On the women's side, Caitlin Kling had a great weekend for uh, for the Cardinals at St. Benedict. Uh, their Invitational, she had a pair of 85s. Her first competitive match, she didn't play uh, at McAllister, so this is the first time that she competed, did, a, did an outstanding job. And, and Madison Gately and Haley Jung continue to shoot real well. They both had real solid rounds at, at the McAllister duel. So there's three individuals right there that are, that are so solidly shooting in the 80s. If they could get their, their four and five scores to drop down just a little bit, I think that they'd be able to make some kind of a move in the right, conference. Right. And they will be in Waverly, Iowa at the Wartburg Invitational this weekend. So stay tuned here to the Cardinals Nest. When we return, we'll talk to the volleyball coach for the Cardinals, Mike Lester. That's next here on HBC TV 25. Football night on HBC is back. When it comes to high school football, no one has you covered like HBC. Join HBC TV 25 Sports this fall as we travel to local high school football stadiums to bring you our game of the week. Football night on HBC. To see the full schedule of games, log on to hbci.com forward slash sports. Right here on HBC TV 25 Sports. Football night on HBC is brought to you by Lewiston Auto. HBC, your home for high school football. HBC Sports has your volleyball fixed this season as your exclusive home for St. Mary's Volleyball throughout the fall. The 2015 Cardinals will look to build on an impressive 20 and 13 mark a year ago and you'll get to watch it happen with five matches brought to you live on TV25. For the full broadcast schedule, simply visit hbci.com sports for details to find out when the Redbirds will take the court. That's St. Mary's Volleyball all season long only on HBC Sports. This is HBC Job Finder. Medtronic in Wabasha is now hiring manufacturing associates for the second and third shifts with pay up to $20 an hour. Duties range from assembly, labeling and packaging product to machine setup, maintenance, and troubleshooting. Positions vary. See job description for further detail. Must be able to lift up 70 pounds and be available to work overtime. To apply, contact Melissa Robertson or visit Medtronic.com. To view this and other jobs, visit jobs.hbci.com. And welcome back to the Cardinals Nest here on HBC TV 25. I'm Dean Beckman, joined by my co-host, Donnie Netto, and Mike Lester, the volleyball coach for St. Mary's, joining us now. And uh, Mike, uh, welcome back to Familiar Grounds, yeah. back here on the Cardinals Nest. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. I'm <laughs> glad we got it up and running again. Yeah, you bet. So, Mike, uh, you're off to a 4-1 and one start this season in the Sugarloaf Classic. We're fresh off of that now. Uh, uh, certainly, it's a big tournament for St. Mary's and it's a home tournament right away. So uh, tell us about your thoughts on the results and the outcome of that Sugarloaf Classic. I know you had some really good competition. Yeah, we there. did. It was, you know, it's always nice to start uh, the season with our home tournament. Um, you know, it's, it's good for our kids to play a little bit, get, get some home cooking, you mm -hmm. know, be able to be in our own facility. And on top of it, you know, we, we got two YAC schools in, which is always really good competition for us. And, and, and it was a really solid weekend. I thought our kids played well. Um, played relatively consistently, and that's what we're going to need to do to be successful this year. You know, Mike, we've talked a lot of times about the schedule that you create, not just the Sugarloaf Classic one, but all season. And you look at so far what you've done. You've had Eau Claire, you've had uh, Lacrosse, you've got Stout this weekend, uh, all out of the WIAC, which is a very good volleyball conference. You play a number of schools from the Iowa Conference, another very good. Right. Talk about the importance of your what you do scheduling because it really is important in volleyball because there are only 10 conference matches right yeah you know you know obviously we only have the the 12 schools within the league but it's but it's such a good volleyball league that that we need to be prepared for that um and one of the ways we do that is with those early season matches and you know so we go out and we play the yx schools the ix schools um with the full intent of going out and making sure that we're ready for that conference opener which is next week 
crazy. <laughs> Don't worry. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, the four matches you had at Sugarloaf. Uh, the only blemish was a, a loss to Stevens Point. When you add to the fact that they're seventh ranked and made it to the final eight, final four, final four yeah. of, uh, of the national yeah. tournament last year. Um, obviously, would have been great to win, but one of those that you can say, okay, not necessarily a bad loss. Yeah, that's true. The only downside was, I, I think, as a team, we, we really wanted to have a little bit better performance. You know, if we play our game and we play well and we still lose, well, we'll accept that, you know, and, and just say the other team was better. Um, Wisconsin Stevens Point is very good, but I really don't think we put our best foot forward in that match and didn't play, play great. Give them credit. You know, a, a lot of our struggles were due to what they were doing, um, but I think we could play a little bit better than we did in that match. You know, talk a little bit because we, in our first segment, we were talking about the success that the teams are having, and a lot of it has to do with the depth that they have. Yeah. And you are no different. You have a, I mean, you have people that aren't playing significantly that last year did play significantly, and it's not that they're necessarily playing poorly, but you have depth and you're allowed to do some different things. Yeah, I think if if you were to ask the question a little differently and say, you know, what's the one thing that that you've really discovered this this early part of the season, it is exactly that. Um, that we do have some depth, we do have an opportunity where if somebody is struggling a little bit, that we can bring somebody in off the bench and count on them to not only do an adequate job, to be, but, but to be very successful. So it's a real strength of our team, I think, this year. And uh, one of the strengths, as we've always talked, is defense. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that starts, you know, with Lex. Yeah. I mean, a four-year four starter and, and really the kind of the heart and soul of, of, uh, of your defense. But talk a little bit about, about your liberos and right. about your defensive specials right. because they don't always necessarily get the credit that they deserve. Sure, yeah. You know, and, and Lex clearly is, is kind of like you said. She's kind of that rock for us. We know what we're going to get out of her day in and day out, and we know that that's a high-level, very consistent play, and that's going to be really important. Then we can build off of that. But, you know, this weekend, probably one of the, the biggest unsung heroes in our matches this weekend was Morgan Thomas, um, a junior defensive specialist who um, played back row for one of our outsides all weekend and had just an outstanding tournament and was really able to kind of play off of Lex and take a little bit of pressure off of her um, and, and the type of performance she had. Mike, I'm curious to know about your expectations coming into this year. Last yeah. year, it's a terrific year again, 20 and 13, but you did lose some key contributors to graduation. Mary Nordic is one of them that comes to mind, but injuries as well. Yeah. And so as you try to piece together the new season coming in, uh, what were your expectations and what are your goals for this year's yeah. team? Yeah, you know, one of the interesting things about kind of how our program works is as coaches, we really don't come in with too many expectations. We leave that up to the players to kind of set. And, and their expectations are very high. Um, like you said, we lost Mary and we lose Molly Grover mm -hmm. also off of that team, both of who were significant contributors to last season's uh, success. Um, but we think, again, we've got some depth and we've got some players stepping into those roles. Alex Peterson coming back from her injury last year. Um, we're going to count on her to do, to do some things that she did two years ago. Um, you know, and with that comes those expectations. You know, we've got a lot of senior leadership. Um, you know, we've got a lot of experience back. And so those players want to be successful. They want to be in the conference playoffs again. They want to compete, uh, you know, for a conference title and, and hopefully an NCAA tournament berth. But again, those are things that the, the players said, and then it becomes my job and my staff's job to do everything we can to help them meet those expectations. You know, you have a couple of people you had mentioned that are coming back from injury, and I, and I always find it you know, amazing how hard they work in the off season to get back. And, sure. and Alex is a great example, and Cassidy Biddle is a great example. Yeah. And sure. um, you know, I know that Alex just you know it killed her when she got hurt and was and, and missed the rest of, of the season last year. But to see her back and see her healthy from a coaching standpoint, knowing what she put into that and what Cassidy put into that, it's got to be nice to see him back in well, the lineup. Yeah, I tell you, Donnie, the first day of our preseason, we do a vertical jump test, and that's it's a little bit of a guide for us as to to what kids may or may not have done over the summer. And it was, was really nice to see both Alex and Cass coming off lower body injuries, an ACL and an ankle sprain, um, have vertical jumps at or above where they were at this time prior to, their, prior to their injury last year. So you know they put in the work this summer and they're excited and ready to go. Talk a little bit, I know we were talking off camera, this is your 18th year as a head coach at St. Mary's and your 20th year at St. Mary's. What's the biggest change that you've seen from that time that when you started to now uh, basically 18 years as a head coach later? Yeah, you know, I think, I think there's a, a number of things, but probably the thing that jumps out most is the continuing improvement in the athleticism of, of, of women 
um, volleyball players in general. Um, you know, you used to go into tournaments and say, all right, there's always one or two matches that you were like, okay, we're probably going to be okay here. But every school, every program has incredible athletes um, that can play the game, and it makes every single match that much more challenging. That's probably the biggest difference. Mike, you had talked about one of your uh, jobs as the coach of the team is to help the players and the team reach their goals. How much do you use the early part of the season to try different rotations, different lineups, to see what works and what doesn't? Yeah, you know, I think I think this year more than others, um, you know, again, and I think it leads to our depth a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly early in the season, we want to give everybody an opportunity um, in a match situation to see how, how we go. You know, Sugarloaf Classic, every single player on our 20-player roster got into a match. Um, and had an opportunity there. So that's going to be important for us, um, not just in terms of who's playing on any given day, but if somebody is struggling to have, um, have people coming in that have had an opportunity to be in a match, later in the season is going to be a real important piece for us. Somebody is going to have some kind of a nagging injury at some point, um, hopefully nothing major, but we need to make sure that people that are coming off the bench are ready to go. Right. Can you real quickly uh, preview this coming weekend? You head down to Loris for the uh, Loris Invitational. Again, four quality matches yeah. for you guys. Can you just quickly kind of talk about what to expect this weekend? Yeah, you know, the, the teams this weekend, every team we play this, this coming weekend um, had a successful opening weekend. They all have winning records um, going into the week. Um, Wisconsin Platteville had a great weekend. Stout um, is 5-1 and one on the year. Um, uh, Loris uh, University, the host, um, came up and played really well against some other Mayak schools. Um, so it's, it's going to be very, very competitive for us, for sure. All right, and Mike, uh, the mental toughness, always important, but it seems like this team has that because they came off of that loss with a quick 3 nothing defeat of Luther. And so uh, that, was, that was impressive, and obviously that's going to be a big part of the season, be able to rebound from defeats and it things is, like it's, that. It's interesting you bring that up because at, right after the, uh, the Stevens Point match, the, my assistant coaches and I talked about, okay, now let's see kind of what kind of character we have. How can we rebound from, you know, uh, playing a team that was very good, but also from not having our best performance. Can we rebound and come back and play really well against Luther, a team who competed extremely well with Stevens Point in their match? So it was really good yeah. to see. And certainly we encourage our viewers to get out and see Mike Lester's uh, club. The next chance would be next Wednesday, right? Uh, the 16th, you'll have a home match. Yeah, we open conference play against uh, St. Catharines mm -hmm. next Wednesday. All right. So, Mike, thanks so much for being Absolutely. on the show today, and uh, best of luck the rest of the season. Great. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, All right. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back to talk M Club Weekend, the big sports celebration weekend at St. Mary's. We'll do that next here on HBC. This is HBC Job Finder. Medtronic in Wabasha is now hiring manufacturing associates for the second and third shifts with pay up to $20 an hour. Duties range from assembly, labeling and packaging product to machine setup, maintenance, and troubleshooting. Positions vary. See job description for further detail. Must be able to lift up 70 pounds and be available to work overtime. To apply, contact Melissa Robertson or visit Medtronic.com. To view this and other jobs, visit jobs.hbci.com. HBC Sports has your volleyball fixed this season as your exclusive home for St. Mary's Volleyball throughout the fall. The 2015 Cardinals will look to build on an impressive 20 and 13 mark a year ago, and you'll get to watch it happen with five matches brought to you live on TV25. For the full broadcast schedule, simply visit hbci.com sports for details to find out when the Redbirds will take the court. That's St. Mary's Volleyball all season long, only on HBC Sports. We chose HBC because they're a local company. They have a big audience in Winona, which is the geographic group that we're looking for. Mel is very easy to work with. She's genuinely concerned about how our money is being spent, and she does everything she can to make sure we get the most for our money. She takes care of us, so whenever there's a problem, which is rarely, I know that I can go to her and she's gonna take care of it. To see how HBC Advertising can help your company, call Melanie at 507-474-5802. And welcome back to the Cardinals' Nest. And uh, we'll wrap up uh, this show by talking about the big M Club weekend, sports celebration weekend at St. Mary's. And Donnie, uh, the big event is sort of Friday night. That's the award ceremony and the Alumni uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And this year we have 
three former hockey players getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's Corby Manis from 1995 men's hockey and Missy Memkin, uh, 2003 women's hockey and Missy Westergren Coons, also from women's hockey. And I'm, I've been there long enough to remember two of them, <laughs> Missy and uh, Absolutely. Uh, Missy. Corby got here uh, the year before I started, so I did not get to see him play, but I'm in, I'm in your boat. I got to see both of the Missies play. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's really exciting that uh, we get to induct the two Missies because they will become the first women's hockey players in, inducted into the uh, St. Mary's Sports Hall of Fame. So that's always going to be you know, something special. And I remember those early years and, and the success that they had. And, I'm, you know, I know I went out to uh, New York with them when they made it to the national tournament out there. And, and uh, Missy Memkin was a, f was a phenomenal goalie and uh, probably one of the best female goalies I've seen uh, in my 20 years and, and uh, you know, did an outstanding job for the Cardinal. And Missy Westergren, uh, she was, she knew how to score goals. Let's put it that way. She <laughs> was, she was, uh, she was an outstanding, uh, outstanding performer, obviously being inducted into the Hall of Fame, but, uh, you know, really two outstanding pioneers for, uh, for women's hockey at St. Mary's. And I think, uh, you know, you talk about some role models for people to come. They are, they are two great ones. And then you've got Corby. Corby is, uh, you know, was an outstanding player for the men's hockey team. And, and uh, he played on the last uh, national championship team that, uh, that played at St. Mary's in 94, 95. And, and so, uh, you know, he's one of those that, um, you know, is, is one of those that probably should have been inducted a little earlier. But, um, you know, he's getting in. And, and I'm excited uh, to see some of the men's hockey players come back. And kind of ties in with, uh, you know, Adam Gill is coming back, uh, you know, came back with the, uh, with the cup with John and, uh, and with Eric Lear. And so uh, he'll be around to, uh, you know, kind of talk hockey with, uh, with, mm -hmm. uh, with Corby and, and, and those guys. We follow that up. Uh, we get to recognize all of our award winners from the past year, from the 14-15 uh, season. A lot of award winners this year. Um, it'd be very exciting. We'll unveil our outstanding uh, male and female athletes, our, our male and female scholar athlete winners, and then recognize everybody that, uh, that earned all conference, that earned uh, you know, sports, MIC sportsmanship awards, all of our uh, All-Americans, they'll all get recognized. And it's really a, an outstanding event. And I know that the athletes look forward to it. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a great way to really recognize the successes that we had uh, over the past year. Right. And um, next week here on the Cardinals Nest, we'll be able to announce who some of those winners are from, from those very special awards. Yeah, Looking my lips are sealed. <laughs> uh, remember, too, <laughs> next Wednesday, you'll be able to see that volleyball matchup, uh, the conference opener for Mike Lester squad right here on HBC TV 25 starting at 7 o'clock. Well, that's going to do it for the Cardinals Nest here on HBC. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back again next week with another Cardinals Nest on TV 25.